Okay, well, welcome everyone to our conversation with Marco Adli, director of Mama, a short film. Uh, now, Marco is a first generation Coptic immigrant uh, living in Mississauga, Ontario. He's an aspiring filmmaker and he produced this uh, wonderful short film that, uh, and as I've told him this before, only uh, a uh, a diaspora copt could make um and it is um uh, deeply deeply engrossing um and so before we begin the film screening um i would like to just say a few words about egypt migration uh we are a public facing community initiative um invested in the histories and present realities of egypt's migrants um, we seek to preserve those histories, to document people's stories. Um, we seek to promote the experiences of all of Egypt's migrants, uh, to increase uh, the visibility of our communities. Uh, and we work to empower uh, young Egyptian professionals engaged in uh, various aspects of the cultural sector uh, all over the world. Um, and uh, with that, I'd invite you to check out our website, www.egyptmigrations.com, uh, to follow us on social media. We're on every platform. Um, and uh, to engage with this ongoing work to uh, support uh, the histories and present realities of all of Egypt's migrants. Um, so I would like to now turn it to uh, the film screening of Mama, a short film. Uh, please join me in um, checking out this incredible, uh, well, captivating story. I hadn't seen it in a while. <laughs> <laughs> it's wonderful. Um, so, Marco, tell me, what was it like <laughs> making this? What inspired you? Yeah. Um, well, um, my uh, I you know I I was born in Egypt and I came uh, with my family to Canada when I was about nine. And, you know, I've always uh, really loved movies, but uh, movies were kind of made on this different planet, like, um, and they were made about uh, people that uh, looked different than how I looked and about stories that I had, you know, <laughs> that, that were very different than my everyday life. Um, and then, you know, around 2011, in the years leading up to 2011, and in the aftermath of that, there was kind of a very unfortunate series um, of, of like uh, attacks in Egypt. Um, and I remember there was there, you know, after every event, we would have uh, like at church, there, there would be like a memorial service. 
and um you know and and at home the tv would be on the entire time and you know these really impactful images and then the next day i would go to school and it would be like a completely different world nobody has any idea that anything is happening and neither do they really care um and you know it was at that time that i became aware of um being in between uh, two worlds in between, you know, my, my culture and my family and, um, and, and, you know, Canadian society and, um, and, you know, being in between implies that you don't really fit in either one. Um, so, you know, flash forward, um, like 10 years and I, I had made, you know, some uh, exercises, smaller films that are really kind of derivative of, of movies. And then I decided that I'm gonna try to write about this and, um, and, and, you know, that was, that was a challenge. Um, you know, how do you even start to formulate kind of a cinematic language, uh, you know, a, a visual language, an auditory language to tell the story that, um, I kind of hadn't really seen before. And that was an out of, you know, trying to figure that out um, and out of trying to uh, tell the story that, you know, this, this film happened. So that's, that's, that's the, that, um, that was the inspiration. And you, uh, you mentioned briefly your, your own kind of experience, but I want to learn more about you, about um, the the person behind the film. Um, yeah. <laughs> so uh, what, um, well, do you know what brought your family here to Canada? And perhaps what was your experience? Like you said, being caught between two worlds. Could you tell us a little bit more about that? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I, I think, um, you know, the reason my family came to Canada was much like, um, you know, the, why most people came to Canada pre-2011, um, which is, uh, you know, a pursuit of, of a better life, you know, a future for your children. Um, but in, um, you know, in Egypt, I, I went to French school. So one, one thing is that like, I came here not knowing like a lick of English. Um, and I think, you know, that really took a while to even, even to be able to have a conversation at school. And I think that it was during that time that the seed was planted um, uh, for me to fall in love with a visual language, which cinema is um and that's you know out of uh um uh, out of a need to, to to express something about my reality um or or just you know the people um around me and um yeah and then you know i started i started off by taking photos um and which kind of makes sense and um uh, slowly you know like looking back now it seems inevitable but um you know movies were really like these you know these events like i would um you know watch the new james bond and be obsessed with james bond for like the week after and it would be like these really profound experiences or even um you know some of my earliest memories are like you know it, 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 images on a screen that would i found i find really beautiful and really impactful even outside of narrative context and so through time I was you know falling in love with this medium that is cinema and around high school is when I was like you know what like you know um let's try to make some films and um uh, you know started off making some some um some action scenes you know all sort of really terrible things that like I really hope no one ever gets their hand on because they really were like, uh, um, you know, experiences, but they lead here. They lead into um, developing, well, beginning to develop a certain craft, a certain aptitude for visual storytelling. And, um, and then at some point, um, I was like, 
I was like, if I'm to, if I'm going to do this, right, then I'm going to do it. And how do I start to um, tell stories that are personal to me that only I can tell in the way that I tell them? And, um, you know, this was kind of the first attempt at that. Amazing. Um, I think I will ask you one more question and then turn it over to the audience. I don't want to monopolize all of your time today. Um, so um, my last question to you is really, did you contemplate as you were producing this film and, and preparing it, um, did you contemplate um, how it might be received by cops in Egypt and what what do you think about that about about um Egyptians watching uh this film um because it, it is as as I've said before um very much a, a diaspora story yeah um that's 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 an interesting question I think um I, I think that maybe I, um, like my mind didn't really go there. And while making it, there was like, you know, people in the cast and crew were like, what, you know, what do you think you're saying these things that people might not agree with in the dialogue? And, you know, how do you think people in Egypt are gonna, what are they gonna make of that? And um, I, I kind of hadn't thought of that um, up to that point because, um, you know the, the the impetus of the film right was was to tell this this story about the diaspora existence and um i think um you know in, in many ways the, my audience was that um you know 12 or 13 year old coptic boy who really loves movies and hasn't really ever seen himself in one um that was like something that i was constantly trying to remind the crew of like that we're doing something really cool because you know it, it hasn't been done in this way before um and you know in 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 many ways we didn't um we didn't really try to uh explain a lot right which that's something that came up which was like you know what about you know a western audience they're not gonna understand what you're talking about and you know the response to that was like um you know, um, that, that we're just not going to pander to that. We're going to make a film, right, uh, for, for about, um, about Copts in the diaspora, for Copts in the diaspora. But I think the really interesting thing is that once, you know, having done that, I think the film, um, you know, in conversations I've had with people who are non-Copts, it actually crosses that line. And I haven't really heard back from... I haven't heard from people in Egypt, but I wonder if it does the same thing. I think people who, um, you know, non cops who went into the film with a certain openness, uh, you know, a certain um, you know, like willingness to be moved by a story, you know, they. I think the film uh, was most effective on 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 those people, and I. Um, yeah, I think that sort of answers the question. <laughs> no, it absolutely did. Um, and so I'm going to now uh, turn uh, to uh, everyone in the audience. And we already have a very uh, eager question uh, from uh, Leila Zanussi, who is our editor here at Egypt Migration. Hi everyone and hi Marco. Seriously, I'm I'm so glad we managed to um, organize this session and so nice to see you. Oh, uh, yeah. So I <laughs> I had a I had a like a question and like a wondering in a sense. I found your like the nuance of bringing together the importance of food children being like the hope for the future, like intergenerational trauma, all of those could really be felt, they were all tangible. But I guess my question for you is, um, what's the significance of focusing on mama in especially that specific sentence 
do you love mama can you talk yeah. a little bit about that because i think there's something there <laughs> um that's a really great question <laughs> um well i think i think maybe maybe there's like a two-part answer to this i think um in order to package all, you know, all these things, all these things that I wanted to say about culture and about like kind of our, our world. Um, I, my belief is that, um, you know, you, you, you uh, show up and you stay for the relationships. So at some point I made a decision, right. Um, that, this film right was going to be about a lot of things but primarily it's going to be about the relationship between a mother and her son um and why that relationship specifically i i i just think it's a very powerful uh you know uh bond and i think that um in in many ways it's it's um it manifests itself in a very specific way in in an in, in an egyptian household um so that was um you know that was kind of a decision that i that we made early on and you know there is obviously you could obviously go down the metaphor route right where you know what's you know what's uh what's motherhood right what what does it mean to um uh i think everybody who's ever been around egyptians have has heard like egypt is our mother right and um the, I, i'm aware of kind of that layer to it but i think that um it was primarily or, or at least on my end like on the creative end it was a way to frame uh this story and i think um yeah and i and i i think you know the story of how that relationship changes um imp or is impacted by forces that are um outside of the relationship itself i think you know mina and his mom you know and would really love to just be good buddies right and and ma mother loves mina and and likewise but you know what comes in between them this void right that the camera bridges in the end you know when we um when we have like this moving shot that, that ends on mina is is television is you know or in the dream sequence it's like this river of um time passing uh yeah does that make sense it really does make perfect sense. It was beautiful. Thank you so much. Well, thank you so much. Uh, um, and uh, thank you both. We do have another question from um, uh, the audience. DB asks, uh, Marco, were you drawing off any particular films for inspiration during production? Oh, absolutely. Uh, that's like a gift question for, for a movie buff. <laughs> uh yes i think i think quite a few films but not to spend the rest of the hour talking about this um one film that i had on constantly leading up to uh production was um uh, taxi driver uh you know which i think is one of the greatest films ever made and particularly because um you know in in the way that it uses cinema in the way it uses like image and sound and editing to capture a certain loneliness or an alienation from the environment um and i so that was that was like a big touchstone um and i'll mention one more um there's an Italian film I, I, um, by by a director called uh, Antonioni called Red Desert, and um, you know, and uh, it's also about you know this female protagonist who's um, alienated from her surrounding. You know, he takes it to a much more um, you know he, he takes it in the direction of existentialism and kind of modernity as a whole but you know the same cinematic devices that he uses um you know i i uh i went back to 
um, especially in the shot with the blue room. That's actually that's a, a, like an, an almost verbatim quote of one of the scenes in in, in uh, that film, where uh, the main character wakes up and the room she was sleeping in has like completely been turned into pink. And I, that was like, that had a really big impact on me. So, you know, we, we built a small, um, a small set uh, that was like a bedroom and we, we painted it blue. And um, I thought that was like a really, uh, that was an important visual to, uh, to what the film, uh, what the film is and what the film means. Uh, and I'll, I'll keep it at that just because, you know, <laughs> if, if, yeah, if I start going, we'll be here till tomorrow. <laughs> um, I wouldn't mind that personally. <laughs> I'm very much enjoying <laughs> learning from you. Um, so we do have a, a question from, uh, Christine, who is our social media manager at Asian Migration. Uh, Christine wants to know, do you have a dream actor, filmmaker, you would want, oh, sorry, dream actor or um, filmmaker you would want to collaborate with other than Rami Malek, of course. <laughs> um, yeah, Rami's great. <laughs> um, okay, yeah. Uh, of course, I think, um, Hmm. Let me let me think on this just for a sec. <laughs> In case you're listening, whoever I'm gonna, <laughs> um, well, um, you know, I think this is a bit of a cheap shot for film buffs, but uh, you know, I'm. <laughs> I would love to work with this cinematographer, um, and, and and his name is Emmanuel Lubetsky, um, and and he's a Mexican cinematographer, and I uh, I I think I'm a big fan of really visual storytelling and and of of trying to create um, really uh, powerful um, images, like it's it, the I, I am a strong believer in, in the power of the image that like a single image can encapsulate um, the entire narrative, but also go way beyond that. Um, and I think Manuel Lubetsky, like people might know him from The Revenant um, or, or Children of Men, and he's great. And th that would obviously be a dream. So in case you're listening, Chivo, uh, <laughs> yeah, send me an email. <laughs> Oh, Layla with a second question. <laughs> I can't, I can't help myself. Sorry. First of all, I wanted to thank you again that you chose Egypt Migrations to premiere your, your movie with us, your film with us. And my question for you is, are there any other projects in the work? And please continue collaborating with us. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, first of all, thank you. I think, um, uh... You know, I was really thrilled when you guys picked it up, and I think it got in front of, uh, a, a, you know, m many people that wouldn't have seen it otherwise. So thank you. Um, and yes, there are always projects in 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 the works. Um, there is. Uh, I, I am finishing up a film that we shot last summer. Um, like while we were wrapping post production on this, it's 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 like very very different. I can't like <laughs> I can't stress how completely different it is from this one. It's much more experimental and um, uh, it's it's longer too. But um, yeah, there is always there is always uh, more films. I think there is like a large untapped well of of stories. Um, that are just kind of dying to be told in this medium. Um, and I think, uh, yeah, that's something I'm gonna, um, I'm, that's like a well that, I, you know, I, I start tapping into and people are still, you know, using up a hundred years down the line. So. <laughs> Super <we> excited. <laughs> 
And we have a question from Marcus. Please go ahead. Hello. Hi, Marcus. Thank you, folks. For, uh, yeah. Th hi, everybody. Thanks, folks, for uh, for bringing in uh, Marco and uh, for such a, an important conversation. And I think um, I think if we as a Coptic community we need to see uh, folks who work in other fields, creative fields like cinematography and other than that. Uh, um, my question to you, Mark, was, it's a question about the, the movie. Um, why did you kept the ending like, um, or it, would you have something in mind? Because the ending was so open, um, wasn't directing audience to certain direction or any lead. So I'm just picking your mind about this, why the ending um, was in that particular way. Uh, and I have a follow-up once you're done. Sure, yeah. Uh, thanks for that, Marcus. And that's a great question. I think, um, I think the ending is open because, uh, you know, in, in many ways, the story is open. Like, um, I think that uh, this, this is the kind of film that, um, that doesn't have like a neat ending and they like uh, they lived happily ever after um and but but i do think that you know the ending is kind of uh you know is 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 some sort of a statement i think um you know having um mina on on kind of the threshold between home and uh, the world outside um you know and and mother you know being inside and looking at him with the television in the foreground right like that image um with kind of introducing the 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 music which is um an a bach aria um and and um is is you know, is is the heart of that moment. There is there is longing there. There is longing for connection. There is longing to surmount kind of this void, right? That that's in the middle. And um, and I think yeah, that's um, that that's kind of where my head was at with that. Um, yeah, awesome. Thank you. And the other uh, my my follow up question was. Well, what's the perception of um, the Coptic community to such movie? And what I mean by like mainstream Coptic Coptic folks, like mm. church going folks, folks who are not um, who would like tell folks who go study films, for example, oh, why did you go do this, Habib, or stuff like that. <laughs> so uh, I'm just like. Wondering how folks, because you like the, the 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 story of the movie actually touches on like I work with newcomers and immigrants, and even the setup, it's like uh, the Kandu uh, apartment in like uh, Mississauga or North York or Scarborough. It's like I love the setup and everything. So I'm wondering how like uh, what was the feedback of folks who are just moved from Egypt or newcomers or uh, uh, or just means thing folks. What what was the perception? What do you think? Um, yeah, I would love to know more about this. Yeah, absolutely. I think just like a note on the apartment, like a you know, fun fact. <laughs> um, so this was actually like a friend's apartment, and and uh, you know, we kicked him out for a weekend, and <laughs> it absolutely looks nothing like <laughs> it does in the film. So you know making the couch look like that having you know the cross and and um the, the the little statuettes around the tv the tv itself those were all like very intentional decisions to evoke a certain kind of 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 you know existence um and i think about reaction um I, I gotta be honest, I, Marcus. I I don't I'm, I don't know. <laughs> I don't the people I um, I I I have 
uh, I've only spoken to kind of uh, a, f- a few people and I'm not really on social media. So just people have kind of been filling me in. Oh, you know, people are sharing it. I was like, oh, that's great. <laughs> that's really exciting. Um, but I think, I, I actually think that, um, I, I think that it might have resonated with people even, even um, um, like at last, last Christmas, you know, we, there's like the the uh, mandatory Christmas gathering on on Christmas Day, and and um, you know one of uh, one of the people there came up and and uh, told me like, you know what I I didn't really get it, and I was like okay well um, let's talk about it like you know what what did you make of that, and and she kind of told me exactly what the film is about um so so i think i i think you know it it it, um it might have gotten to people that's at least that's the hope and i think that um you know um well one one of the most rewarding kind of things throughout all of this was um like a a couple of like really young uh girls also at that gathering like they're they're in grade four and five or something. And, you know, they, I was like, Hey, did you see the film? And, and they were like, yeah. And I was like, you know, what, what do you think, you know, what's it about? And they kind of like, Oh, you know, there's the kid and there's his family and there are things happening in Egypt. And, you know, they, he either her runs away and comes back and, um, you know, that's the power of cinema is that, and it, what it does is, is it, it tells a story that that connects with you know these two young girls and then also uh you know a person who's slightly older and where language might fail to uh link these two i think that the cinema and the power of the image could be the bridge thank you thank you <laughs> thank you marcus uh, for those great questions and uh marco uh i'm uh loving just learning all about this different experience the different experiences the perspective um and i'm gonna um abuse my moderator status to jump in and ask another question uh, <laughs> and i'm just really curious um about you're you're hitting on a very sensitive topic right like when we talk about Maspero and we talk about the 2011 revolution we even talk about various attacks um on Coptic places of worship in Egypt and so on and how that's experienced in the diaspora um it's a very touchy topic for many people Coptic and non-Coptic alike um and I just wonder well one um was there any negative reaction from people that you told you wanted to do this kind of a film? And two, um, what did it mean to you? What did it feel like for you to be covering? I know we, we don't see it directly in the film. We see it through the lens of a TV screen. We see it on the faces of the parents. We see it in the, the, the sort of distant looks of the child having to live through all of this. But, well, how much of that was coming from you and your own experience as when you were younger? Um, and what did it mean for you to make this kind of film that's on such sensitive topics? And how was there a negative reaction from people? Mm-hmm. Um... Well, I wouldn't say they were negative reactions there, but there was a bit of reticence. Like there was like, are you sure you want to go there? Um, Like, you know, this is, this might be a little bit, like you said, touchy or or whatnot. And, and I kind of, you know, I heard people say that I was like, then yeah, yes, yes. If you say it's touchy, then we should, you know, (laughs) we should absolutely uh, touch upon it. Um, And I think, in terms of, of of kind of what it meant to me, and I, I try to be kind of honest and truthful to my experience and my recollection of um, 
of what it felt like to uh, to be in 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 that specific place and at that specific time. Um, you know, it's not autobiographical, obviously. Like the family is very different than um, than my family, but I tried um, to capture kind of the feeling that was that was the start of all of this. Um, sorry, I, I lost I lost my train of thoughts there for a second. Um, Could you could you kind of you know re repeat the question so I just remember where I was going with that? <laughs> no, absolutely, absolutely. So um, I think well you covered most of it already. I think I just wanted to uh, hear from you a bit more about you know considering the the topic, um, how it felt for you to put it out there and to put so much of yourself out there and so much of of well, what it felt like for you in the middle of production to tell these stories. Yeah, okay. I, I remember where uh, where I was going. I, I think that part of um, what drives uh, me to make movies is to work uh, through... Um, is to work through difficult topics, right? And I think that that's kind of my way, you know, that cinema is my way of making sense of, of these things. Um, and I think it was, it was very, very gratifying to be able to make it because, um, you know, early on after I had kind of an initial, an initial script, I was like, how on earth are we gonna get this made? Especially that, you know, I had, I had tried to get some uh, funding for it and there was you know that didn't really work out um, there was a bit of like having to explain why this story is important and um, and so so that was like you know that was a whole thing and I was like how on earth are we going to do this like we have to find somebody who's like you know um, in around the age of what uh, somebody's father would be and we have to find a kid right like how you know this movie um, fails or succeeds on you know the Mina's face right um, and and I knew it was possible because there are so many great movies so much great cinema that that does that really effectively like any Guillermo del Toro film or uh, you know uh, or, or like there's a really great film uh, called Spirit of the Beehive that you know has a really great uh, young protagonist um, and then you know I had I um, I reached out to one of the people who ended up being my co-producers on this and and um, he knew this kid at church because he used to uh, be his like uh, a scouts teacher and you know and and we went just through like you know on almost 20 kids and finally arrived at this guy right so you know on on the set right um there was um to to be able to see it all coming together that's always gratifying but especially for um for this story and this film because I think um, that, you know, in, in 20 years, I may look back on this film and see it as the start of something. And, and it's, it's a, you know, it's, it's a shift in, it's in many ways, like a shift in perspective. It's going from, you know, looking outward for the subject of great art and, and, and great cinema to like, you know, looking inwards and that, you know, that, my experience and Coptic experience, our experience as Copts in the diaspora can be the subject of art that takes itself seriously. And so it was very, very meaningful to be able to, to do that and see it all come together in that way. Uh, thank you so much for sharing. Um, we do have another question from uh, DB in the chat. Can you talk a bit about working with Mina, what direction you gave him? Yeah, yeah, that's 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 um, that's a very good question. 
I think that um well the 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 actor's name is Fedi and um yeah Fe Fedi was 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 great because um you know in in the beginning um uh, in the beginning uh, well throughout the day you know he was he was so he was so professional and he was so great just as 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 much um just as professional as ever anybody on set um but then you know after like the 10 hour shoot mark he kind of clocked out <laughs> and so you know that was that was a really interesting uh, uh you know that was a really uh interesting challenge to work with but a lot of the time like um I Fedi like hardly knew what was going to happen in the script. Like I didn't give him the script because I, you know, uh, what would happen would be like he'd show up to set and I'd be like, okay, great, you're going to stand here and you're going to, you know, take a, take a second, you're going to look there and you're going to walk. And he just hit it out of the park every single time. Um, so, um, yeah, I think we got very lucky with, with him. And he was like, um, we, we had a small screening for the cast and crew when it was when the edit was done. And like he was so proud <laughs> and 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 rightly so. And and um it was it was really great to facilitate that kind of self-expression for um, you know, through acting for um you know for for someone who 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 who's uh you know a young cop. Thank you. Um, so I uh, turn the floor to our audience. Uh, if you have uh, questions uh, for Marco, uh, comments regarding um, the short film Mama. Or else I'm just gonna talk about like movies for the <laughs> for forever. <laughs> I think we have a I think we have a podcast here. Yeah, <laughs> movies with Marco. We will host it at Egypt Migrations, by the way. I'm just letting you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Have like, uh, you know, like e Ebert and Sickel. Um, uh, Siskel, uh, sorry, in, in like the 90s, had Roger Ebert and his friend like kind of just sat down and talked about a movie for every week. So we'll have we'll have that. <laughs> Well, I can definitely say that um, the movie uh, resonated with me uh, quite a bit. Um, I mean, I, I can't recall a time since my childhood where I didn't um, obsessively watch News of Egypt, and especially over the past 20-some-odd um, years as I've gotten older and I'm able to appreciate and understand these things more. Um, and to be able to uh, feel, I think, what was on Fedi's face, right? The, what was on Mina's face. Um, and so we do have uh, another question, um, which I think dovetails really well off of uh, what I was just saying. I felt it to be so authentic, at least in my experience when I was younger. I think the only thing missing was a ship ship, you know, slipper <laughs> in mama's hand. Um, and uh, so we have a question here from uh, Carol Marcos who asks, can you talk a little bit about capturing authenticity without falling into cliché? Yeah, um, absolutely. I think 
I think for some reason, right, for um, at least in, in my experience, for most of my experience um, uh, growing up, we've kind of perfected the caricature of the, uh, the, the fob copped, you know, between you, uh, quote, unquote, um, you know, uh, and I think we, I'm not even going to try to, you know, go down the rabbit hole of where that comes from. But I think that it was very important for me from the very start that if I was going to do this, uh, which I was going to, to be um, hyper aware or hyper vigilant, not to fall into cliche, um, not to, because um, even though I think cliches are cliches for a reason, because they have some some note of truth or or once did, I think um, kind of it, it discounts. The, the the reality and and kind of the gravity uh, of experience um so i think it was you know part part of the process in, in capturing authenticity um which thank you michael that's that's you know the biggest compliment you can give to a film is to say that it's authentic um was you know that started off in the writing process into in 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 writing and rewriting scenes till they felt truthful and authentic. Um, but it was also like, um, you know, in the rehearsal process. Um, for instance, you know, one thing we did in, in the couple of weeks leading up to the shoot is that I, invite, I invited the actors over and we would go to the basement and we would do these really fun improv exercises where, um, where, you know, we, we would use a couple of chairs and be like, you know, that's your bed, right? The alarm just went off. And I would tell each of the actors different things. Um, and and um, kind of say action and see, and see, you know, see what happens. And um, I think what, what made it into the film from that is, is, um, um, is the authenticity of, of, of these people, these three people having, you know, have starting to have memories of, of each other. Um, so that was like on a very um, craft and acting uh, level. And I think finally, like on the day, um, it was to create an environment that was conducive to authenticity. And, uh, you know, one thing I did was not to tell Amira, who's the mother, what the last scene of the film was going to be, um, and you know, once we had once we had lit it, and once we were ready to shoot, I took her aside and was like, um, um, "Go ask Mina this." And you know, I remember she was like taken aback. She's like, "Oh, <laughs> oh, that's where we're going with this." Um, and I think it was it was it was really beautiful, and I, um, and and. Uh, yeah, so um, that's kind of some of the things that we did to try to be um, to to be true. Thank you so much, um, and thank you, Carol, for that question. Uh, we do have one more uh, question um, uh, that came in from Instagram. Um, how did the Mississauga, the Mississauga community receive it uh, specifically? If uh, you've heard anything. Um, hmm. Trying, I'm trying to remember. Um, I, I, and, and I guess in, in what I heard, it, it was, it was, uh, Like just in general, you know, whether whether the Mississauga community or, or cops or even non-cops, it was either the film worked for them or or it didn't work, um, which I think is is um, kind of indicative of a certain 
universality of, of, of cinema language that I think um, it kind of um, kind of transcends that. Perfect. Thank you. Um, so before we start wrapping up, I want to ask if anyone has any questions uh, for Marco and in regards to the film. And we already, oh, perfect timing. <laughs> uh, Meg, uh, Meg asks, uh, do you think that one day you can make a long movie about cops? And if yes, do you think it would be interesting for non-cops? Yeah. Um... Well, I I think absolutely, um, and whether whether it would be interesting for non cops, I so um, I I go back to Martin Scorsese. You know, I I I owe this man so much of what I know about cinema, and he and he has a saying where he says the most personal is the most universal, and I think that um, that's. Um, that's especially true of, of cinema because cinema um, is is uh, cinema is 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 actually very personal. You know the the experience of of sitting in a room in a dark in a dark theater and having you know faces of people like flicker on on like you know a sixteen foot screen. You know it's 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 bigger than life and um the experience every person has with with a film is extremely personal um so i think you know i think the hope would be is that if i do my job properly if i am if i'm honest if you know i'm able to capture some truth about whatever that film ends up being about um you know and and you know i I am a cop, so I know about being a cop. I, you know, and and I could bring that to the film. I think that yes, ultimately, it it should be, you know, a film that that works for everybody because um, because I think you know there is nothing to say that Coptic experience is less universal than. Uh, you know, experience of a soldier in World War II, as great as these films are, and as much as I love them, it's awfully specific to tell the story of, like, you know, um, uh, of, of Saving Private Ryan, for example, where people are, are trying to go to find this, this private who's called Ryan, right? There is nothing to say that that's a more universal story than the story about a Coptic family trying to um, figure out life in Canada. Um, so, yeah. And I can say for one that a uh, film on the Coptic immigrant experience in Canada or even in North America, um, yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, we do have a question from Alessandra. Uh, what's the best advice you have for someone trying to career switch into film or media? Uh, where would you recommend they start? Well, Alessandra, like I, I'm very flattered um, that you would ask me that, and you know, um, I'm almost tempted to, you know, tell you if you find good advice, let me know. But <laughs> I'm not, I'm not going to be a cop out in that way. Um, I, I, I think, um, I think that the, the best advice I ever heard was to just go out and do it. Um, you know, to just um, pick up a camera and get people together and and make a film and tell your story. And, you know, I try to tell myself that, obviously. Um, and I think, you know, if you do it often enough, is if you're, um, if you care enough, if you put yourself into it and, um, you know, um, when, when Hemingway says like, or oh, writing is very easy, you just sit at your typewriter and bleed. Um, you know, I think that cinema is, 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 is that. You pick up a camera and 
you tell stories personally uh, through it and you put it out in the world and you keep doing that. And uh, hopefully people start to be interested in, in your work and uh, hopefully, you know, that um, that like starts to become a career someday. I hope <laughs> the word aspiring was was important to have that <laughs> in the description. I loved the, the movie uh, and I know we all did at Egypt Migrations and we're so delighted that you chose to, pre to premiere it with us. Um, and uh, I would also invite anyone, uh, I think I'm definitely going to do this tonight. Uh, and if anyone is interested, um, to go and watch it again. Now that we've had a chance to hear Marco's take um, and see um, if if it hits differently. Um, and uh, any last uh, thoughts, Marco? Anything you'd like to share with the audience? Perhaps tease us about this other project that you're working on. <laughs> um, well. First of all, thank you very much, Michael. This this was a blast. And um, yeah, I, I think I, I would be very curious to know if whether like this conversation changes people's perspective. I think um, I, if anybody here wants to get in touch, I have like a marcoadley.com with like a contact form. Um, and uh, sure, I'll, I'll give a little um little something about that project it's um it's it's a story about um about uh creation what it means to create personally and kind of the stakes that are involved in that and uh also the possibilities that come with that and i know i could not be more vague but you know <laughs> uh, that way people go 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 to watch it uh but Thank you very much for everybody who showed up and thank you to Egypt Migrations. You guys are the best. <laughs> well, we would be nothing without uh, you and everyone here. Um, and um, we are very excited for another uh, film and many, many more to come from Marco Adli. Um, and thank you for being with us. Thank you everyone for joining.